think that when a lot of men say that women are very masculine now, there is some truth to it, but I also think it's exaggerated. Even though there is some truth to it, it is very much so exaggerated. And I think part of the reason for that is that the lines between what a masculine trait is and what a feminine trait is have been so blurred that when men see women doing something that they would do, they automatically assume that it's a masculine trait. They don't fathom that okay. there's a possibility that the thing that they're seeing the woman do is a feminine trait and that he has taken on a feminine trait. I, okay, give me an example okay. of what you're... So yeah. bickering back and forth. For example, if a man is used to clapping back at people, uh, he may think that clapping back is masculine. So if he's in the company of a woman who claps back, he may think that she's being masculine by clapping back. It will not occur to him that clapping back is a feminine trait and she's being feminine and so is he. It will not occur to them. You said that if men want a more satisfying relationship with a significant other, wife or girlfriend, et cetera, or fiance, they should take more time to learn more emotional intelligence, to learn more soft skills and so on and so forth. Right. And soft skills, empathy, I think that would be more identified as a, a feminine trait, right? Sympathy, feminine trait, nurturing, feminine trait. It seems, and what the guy said is the further we go into this current modern era, it seems like more and more men are being asked to display less and less masculine traits as women are implementing more and more masculine traits. The, the question comes is you'll hear women saying they want a man to know that knows how to take charge. They want a man that knows how to lead. They want a man that knows how to whatever protector and this, that, and the other, right? But everything you hear relative to toxic masculinity are all described as masculine traits. It can be assertive, aggressive, competitive, strong, powerful, and different ways it can be used as positive and they can definitely use negative. So my question is, is one, do you said women, if men want more success, I'm going to paraphrase, learn more feminine, learn more feminine characteristics. How do you think that comes across? Because it just seems like who men are is the it. Do you understand my question? I understand yeah. your question. For one, I would say it's not who men are. It's who they're conditioned to be. I think it's important that we make mm. that distinction. Okay. So I feel like we live in a society that thinks that the we've been conditioned to think that the only way for a marriage and a relationship to work is for each person to have weaknesses for the other person to fill. So I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. So for men, it's almost like we, we're dividing men and women into a right brain and a left brain. So in order for a man and a woman to stay together, they come together to create a whole brain, a left brain together and a right brain together. And because they're creating a whole brain, they're staying together. Follow me. So I know it sounds weird, right? Okay. So then on the left brain, we have the man. He's logical. He's rational. He makes decisions. He's, he does. That's how he operates. On the right side, she's nurturing. She's a little bit more emotional. She's tapped into her creativity. Very feminine traits. So I feel like society's conditioned us to believe that the only way to keep two people together is by separating them into left and right brains. I don't think that's true. I think that what's happened is that the way that men were conditioned, and a lot of people don't like that term toxic masculinity, and I get it. And a lot of people say that it doesn't even make sense. But mm -hmm. I personally do think it makes sense. Because to me, once we say there's a toxic side of something, that kind of implies there's also a healthy side of something. Okay. So if I say toxic mushrooms, that doesn't mean all mushrooms are toxic. That means that some of them are toxic. So if I say toxic mushrooms, we can guess that there's also healthy 
mushrooms or non-toxic mushrooms. I understand why a lot of people don't like the term. Mm -hmm. I, I completely understand it. But when I hear the term toxic masculinity, I think about things that are detrimental and harmful to himself and to other people versus okay. the traits that are masculine but are not toxic to himself or to other people. So the traits that would be toxic to himself and to other people would be things like aggression and impulsivity. So when we do things impulsively, we usually regret it afterwards, yeah. right? Yeah. Usually, most of the time, we're like, damn, I should have thought that through before I did it. So mm -hmm. that would be, I'm giving two examples, aggression and impulsivity. And if you put aggression and impulsivity together, you come out with something quite toxic behavior. Anyone who puts those two things together, yeah, not, chances are you're probably not going to be happy when you snap out of those feelings. You're like, damn, why did I do that? I wish I didn't do that. So that's what toxic masculinity means to me. On the other end, healthy masculinity to me would still be masculine traits, which would be assertiveness. And there's a huge difference between assertiveness and aggressiveness. For me, aggressiveness is an emotional reaction. Assertiveness is thought through and you're advocating for yourself and you're saying what you need directly. To me, they're two very different things. Did I answer your question? I, yeah. I, but I understand yeah. why people don't like the term toxic masculinity. You, you, I understand. Yeah. You answered the question. It yeah. just, it just, well, again, what I'm saying is it just seems like for men to get better, they need to be more like women. I do think that's true. And okay. the reason, hold on one second. And the reason I think that's true is because women have already walked that journey. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. Women were pushed into being very feminine in the past, meaning be nurturing, be a caretaker. What else? Be softer, be smaller. What are their traits? So empathy, compassion, all of those traits that we would welcoming, consider warming. welcoming, mm -hmm. warm, soft-spoken. Women were conditioned to feel like that's what you're supposed to be. If you are female, this is how you're supposed to show up yes. in society. Yes. So we'll say post-feminism, whatever term you want to use, so post 50s, 60s, whatever term you want to use in the United States that women then began to take on more healthy masculine traits, the assertiveness, the leadership, externally speaking. Mm -hmm. So women have already walked the journey of becoming a little bit more whole. So they started out with the feminine and then they started to take on a little bit more of the masculine. So women have already walked that journey of keeping their feminine intact and taking on more masculine traits in order to survive in the working world. Men haven't walked the journey yet. They haven't they still are holding on to the masculine, but they have not yet walked the journey of taking on more feminine traits. So becoming more whole. That's the way that I see it. So when you take a woman and she's taking care of her children at home, if you take a single mom, she's taking care of her kids at home and she's cooking, doing traditionally feminine things. When she goes to the working world, she taps into her more masculine side and men can do the same. When they're in the working world, they can tap into their masculine side. When they go home, they can tap a little bit more into that softer side of our humanity, because we all have it. If boys were not meant to be soft, they wouldn't be born soft. They'd be born very different from baby girls. As a matter of fact, baby boys are actually born much more emotionally reactive than baby girls. Do you understand know what I'm saying? So maybe at some point in time, society found it felt like it was necessary to tell boys don't cry because mm -hmm. they might have been born a little bit more reactive than girls. So maybe that was society's attempt to tamp that down a little bit. I don't have the answer to that. I'm just saying theoretically, possibly. Got it. But men have not yet walked the journey of becoming a little bit more whole externally. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Not internally, but externally. I, I understand I, yeah. what you're saying. Again, it makes sense. And the thing yeah. is, like we didn't, we have plenty of content about that. Another complaint, right? Mm -hmm. So when women say things like, the right man will foster an environment <laughs> for a woman to be comfortable in her feminine. Men, on the other hand, you don't necessarily hear them meeting women to foster an environment for them to be comfortable in their masculine. They're just expected to be. And so, so it's, again, I don't want to dismiss, I get it because I know better, but I also don't want to dismiss that side either mm -hmm. because it seems like men are saying, Hey, I want this thing. Mm -hmm. and, and to the point where if men ask for women to do nurturing things, you'll see online, I'm not your mother. I'm not your caretaker. I'm not, you're not my son. You're not just that and the other. On the flip side, women desire men who know how to take care of them know how to properly treat a woman and treat her like a queen and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The man saying, I'm not your daddy. I'm not, you're not my daughter. Da, they'd come across as, you know, what saying that. So again, I know I hate the, what about ism mm -hmm. games and how about this, but yeah. what's the difference there? I think that both men and women are, are in the same space currently. I think that when a lot of men say that women are very masculine now, there is some truth to it, but I also think it's exaggerated. Even though there is some truth to it, it is very much so exaggerated. And I think 
part of the reason for that is that the lines between what a masculine trait is and what a feminine trait is have been so blurred that when men see women doing something that they would do, they automatically assume that is a masculine trait. They don't fathom that sure. po- there's a possibility that the thing that they're seeing the woman do is a feminine trait and that he has taken on a feminine trait. Tell me if you want me to say that again. I, okay, give you an example okay. of what you're... So yeah. bickering back and forth. So for example, if a man think, has, is used to clapping back at people, uh, he may think that clapping back is masculine. So if he's in the company of a woman who claps back, he may think that she's being masculine by clapping back. It will not occur to him that clapping back is a feminine trait and she's being feminine and so is he. It will not occur to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do understand what you're saying, but then that be, but then the accountability thing comes in. Okay. So it's like clapping back mm-hmm. is, like you said, it's feminine. It's also mm-hmm. immature. Would you oh, agree? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. Okay. And yeah, you also said that women are typically the main ones who clap back. Well, no. Go ahead. Meaning emotionality, reacting on emotion. I'm just using the term clap back as in like. A, Got it. Right. Re- emotional reactivity right. is considered feminine. F- fair. So clapping back is an emotionally charged, reactive thing to do. Fair. Yeah. Now, women are stereotypically right. more emotionally charged and and willing to clap back and and be emotional right. about whatever's going on that they're dealing with. Correct. That's what men say. So this is where. Right. So right. this is where the narrative becomes a problem because yes, men will still say women are more emotional than men, Mm -hmm. but men will also say women are too masculine. So there's the, they, there's just no coherent, there's no cohesive story Mm -hmm. for the way that men talk about women. The the story is no longer cohesive. It's not congruent. It's just today. It's this smart that right now it's this right now it's that it's just, there's no actual ask is what I've noticed. So. I don't know how to say that. No, you I'm you said it. You clear. said it. But to answer your question that you asked me before mm-hmm. about when women say the thing about she will be feminine about the, the right man, that is 100% true. And the reason why it's 100% true is fem. I can't ever say that word. The f- femininity uh, is a very vulnerable space to be in. Human nature doesn't like v- to be vulnerable because it hurts. It's painful. So in order for someone to be vulnerable with you, you have to make them feel safe to be vulnerable with you. Mm. If we remove that word, be feminine, let's replace that with the mm. word vulnerable. Mm. Let's replace it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to say the same thing again. A man needs, the right man will allow her safety to be vulnerable. The right man will allow her safety to be feminine. They mean pretty much the same thing. I got it. Okay. I got it. Now, on the other end, men absolutely do ask for women to bring out the other side of them. So I'll give you an example. So when you ask me, men don't say the right woman will bring out the masculine side of me. No, but most men, if they really sit and think about it, will recognize that the right woman brings out the feminine side in him as well. So often you hear women say, you don't know him like I do. And where that's coming Mm -hmm. from is that when they're having pillow talk, he's going to say, be much more open with her, share certain feelings with her that he may not share with his friends. So he's tapping into his feminine side when he is in a relationship with a woman. So both men and women are saying the same thing in our modern world, that the right partner will allow me to tap into my feminine side. They're saying the same thing in essence, because at its core, femininity is a very vulnerable thing. It's a very soft thing. It's a very open hearted thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in order to be open hearted about around another person, they have to be a safe space for you. And that's whether you're a man or a woman. So that's what women mean when they say that the right man, I will be feminine for the right man. All that she's saying is the right, the man that makes me feel safe, he will be able to make me feel like, hey, it's safe for you to be that. It's safe for you to show that side. I'm not going to hurt you. That's basically all that she's saying. I think that if anyone, especially since we're talking about the black community, if anyone should understand the female experience in terms of being always in survival mode and always having your guard up, it should be a black man, right? Is that not his experience? Like, it is. He yeah. understands what it's like to always have this hard exterior and think that you can't ever let that down. He understands what that's like. And women are saying that's how they walk around. When you think about even about like little girls from the time you're small in elementary school, they tell you go to, to the bathroom two by two. You're raised to have your guard up all the time. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, all that she's all that a woman is saying when she says the right man, I will be feminine for the right man. All that she's saying is. The man that makes me feel safe will be able to see that side of me because I'll feel safe to to show it to him. That's all that she's saying. 